Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to take you guys on a tour of our last booth mock setup before our first vending event since 2019. At the time of recording, um, we've been working and working to build our inventory up from nothing. So we have repurchased and or remade a lot of our displays. A lot of the displays like the leaf ones and these pendant flats we had actually made in the fall of 2019. And we do have some videos here on the channel about that and they will be linked down in the video description as well as links to where you can purchase all of the things that we've purchased uh, if only just to get you started shopping. So like we'll have a link to our tapestry that tapestry may not be your taste, but it'll give you an idea of the size and the price range and the material uh, that we were using. Same for uh, the bracelet bar displays and lighting and all, the, all those different things will be down in the video description. If you saw something in the video and it's not down there, just leave a comment or send us an email. I am very forgetful. So doing my best though, and I really appreciate you all. So I'm going to take you guys from the ground up and just kind of go through all of the points. Um, number one thing, uh, top of the list rather, it's not the highest priority, but it is the foundation that everything else in your booth is built on, and that is your tables. Randy and I, um, that's my partner, uh, we typically bring our own tables to vending events because you never know if your table is going to be a little taller or a little shorter, or um, maybe you know, the depth of the tables provided at the convention is not as deep as the tables that you're used to setting up on. It just, it gives you an element of control. You can also control the height of your tables by either using PVC pipes or those like feet for beds that makes like a bed taller. You can put that um, under the legs of your table to lift your table up to bring it a little bit more um, you know, to viewing height if that's what you prefer. So there's a lot of different ways that also really opens up a lot of space under your table for below table storage, which is a great place to put your back stock or, you know, extra bags or it's just, it's really nice to have out of sight storage that's easily accessible under the table. So I am checking my notes. Yeah. Bring your own when you can. So you know the size, height, um, whether or not your displays will fit. Uh, your, ta your tables and the provided tables like, can be up to an inch different in height is what I've personally experienced. So um, also you may be expecting an eight foot table and they might just have six foot tables <laughs> um, if you're doing an indoor event where the tables are provided. Uh, usually for craft shows, it's you have to bring everything. You have to bring your own pop-up tent. You have to bring your own um lit literally anything so tent tables chairs displays everything so the more self-sufficient you can be with your booth setup i think the better so coming through uh we we have our tables and we just use the fold in half in the middle tables um the, right here we have three of them set up this is 18 feet of booth frontage and the reason we're doing a new booth setup is because we don't have any costumes at this time. Randy had uh, fractured both of his wrists last year and that really cut into our production. Um, and not that I'm like, Ugh, he had to hurt us. No, it's not like that at all. Like he's healed up really well and we're both, you know, in full production now, but we didn't, we didn't have any costumes. And so normally the part of our booth that would have been taken up by those handmade chainmail and leather goods, um, we've spread out with the jewelry that way um you know it can still look nice and full uh we are using tablecloths that are made from bed sheets we got king size bed sheets we fitted them on the end let me actually grab the camera and move it around to show you so you can see this one's actually torn out um and i need to hand sew it before we put things away but we just had it fitted to where it would fit the corners of our table. That way it wasn't like a saggy, weird end. And we did one for the middle. We leave one flat just for in the center that's below the tapestry. And then we have another one for farther on down here. And we use cut up sections of bed sheets for the table runners as well as up here and we just surged the edges so there's no raw edges if you don't have a serger just um 
doing a rolled edge or putting bias tape on it can look really nice. Uh, just, just all sorts of different stuff. You could also do completely just tapestries. Um, it's entirely, entirely up to your discretion. Um, then the next level up that we're going to talk about is the grids. Let me put the phone back down so I'm not making people seasick with moving around so much. Also, just another note on the table covers, it really helps set the tone of your booth. Um, you know, if we came and we set up, it would look a little bit yard sale to just have bare naked uh, six foot tables that I've quite frankly used for crafting. So there's all sorts of like weird paint stains and stuff on the tops of the tables and they're all scuffed up and it's just, it makes it look so much more tidy and more on purpose to have table covers. now. Um, it's entirely up to you how you want to set the tone of your booth. If you want it to be very sleek and professional and minimalist, or if you want it to be very fey and, uh, organic and kind of chaotic, like that's entirely up to you. I just know that making it look like you put in effort really helps sets the tone. <laughs> um, so yeah, these grid squares. These are linked down in the video description as well, and they are single-handedly the best thing we have ever been exposed to to set up our booth. Because if you, you know, just have a two and a half by six foot table, that's all the square, that's all the, you know, space that you get is that one table. Whereas if you can have a first story and a second story, and even in some cases, a third story, we're able to almost double our display space um, just by going a bit vertical. And these grid squares break down really nicely. They fit in a big blue tote. <laughs> Let me pull out the tote. So down here, you're actually gonna see, and this is another big reason to use table covers is because you can hide all of your totes under the table. You can store stuff and it just keeps it from being exposed. So those are the totes. That's about the size of the side. And you can see here, we always have a few extra. And these are, we do choose to use the little corner pieces that attach it. Uh, some folks swear by zip ties. And honestly, zip ties do okay until we start getting up to a third level. It's really nice to have the structure of those corner pieces. <clears throat> and we just, I don't know if we were able to get extra or what, but we just use those corner pieces at every point and I like them, but uh, zip ties can be used as reinforcement and I have seen people use just zip ties. Now, something that's really important whenever you're expanding vertically is to make sure that you're not creating blind spots in your booth. And that's something that we did have the table runner up here to where it would cover up the entire top shelf. But I'm going to go around to the back side of the booth and show you why we changed that. So this is the view from the back side of our table. And by not having the table cover right here, we're able to see when people are pointing at, ooh, I'd like this one, we're able to see that. Or if they're looking at one of our pendant flats and we're able to just kind of peek through because I'm certainly not gonna be able to see from above. I'm not a particularly tall person. Um, and it just, it's kind of nice for years we didn't have any kind of table runner on there. And if it turns out that it is in the way, we that's the easiest thing to take off. So, but that's why we do that. And there's also, you can see, just because of the way we're set up, we're not pulled all the way back to the back edge of the table. We like having a little bit more space um, over like on the back side because we store things like this is, we don't string our pendants up on chains. We bring a, a bin and then we upsell chains because oftentimes, you know, people, whenever they're buying a pendant, they're like, oh, I already have a favorite chain. That's like, I like the length and the material, or they might be getting it for a friend and they're like, well, I don't know if they have a chain or not. So let's get one that matches or you know, so we try to give different metal tone selections, different material selections. We have some stainless steel as well as enameled iron, uh, which I like the enameled iron personally, um, but uh, we don't currently at this time, especially not for our booth setup, we don't function in sterling silver. Um, it's just too expensive uh, if somebody steals something or, you know, something like that. Um, so we, we just uh, stick to the higher end stuff for our online uh, sales and things like that. 
Next, we are going to talk about our lighting. Whenever you're vending an indoor event, presume, like just, just assume that the lighting is going to be less than ideal uh, and plan accordingly. Now, not all booths come with, uh, not all venues provide power. Some of them provide it, some of them charge for it, some of it don't even have it as an option. So if they don't have it as an option, we just don't bring our lights. Well, we always bring them but we just don't necessarily set them up. Um, so typically if it's in a convention center, they will be charging for electric. Sometimes if you're in an event that's in a hotel and you're set up in a hotel ballroom, you might be really lucky and just be on a wall with an outlet. Um, otherwise you might not have any uh, options for it. It, it really, it, it depends on the venue. Uh, typically if it's an outdoor event though, we've never really had power provided to us um even for like a you know pay for it option it's just usually we're out on the street somewhere or in a field or you know something so you'll see here we have two different tones of lighting now down here on the far end are a different type of light um both of them are linked on the far end we have just it's just like a roll of led lights so it's a one of these under cabinet strip lights it's just the lights on a roll um i guess technically i mean it shows it as a different color it's these are a bright white um they did have them in other color options but this one in particular does not change colors um and we hold them on with either binder clips or my favorite these velcro velcro ties that off the spool they come together but you can just separate them and put it through like it's a zip tie and then you can wrap it down and the velcro that this is even when you drop it in your house and you have pets it doesn't get all like nasty the way that some velcros do this stuff it's really easy to keep clean um and it, it holds on really nice so um, I'm going to get you some different angles and then we're going to talk about the pros and cons. So the first type of lighting that I personally prefer is this little bar of light and you can see we have it held on with the Velcro and that was did not come with the lights. We bought the Velcro separately. It is linked down below. I like these bars because we can break up the lighting with some cord that then comes down. That's it plugged into a power strip but then over here you can continue and that cord comes down and through here now anything like this how it's hanging I prefer to have that clipped up because you don't want your customers looking and seeing this dangly cord go ahead and tuck that up you can clip it or zip tie it or velcro it up anything that's like this if we're not able to train it towards the back I'll actually go over it with electrical tape just to, especially over here on the side so that it's not something I mean you don't want somebody grabbing it and getting tangled and you know janking up your lights like um I don't know why they would but you never know sometimes so just getting that stuff kind of tidied up um to me makes you know a, a, a big difference this one thing may not be a big difference but if I can make every single aspect of my booth you know if every little thing can have a one percent improvement then the hundred little things that can be 1% improved on, suddenly we're making a really big difference and impact. And so that's why we'll usually bring a little bit of electrical tape with us or any tape that matches your setup. <clears throat> we also bring, this is a wood finish in dark walnut. It's the same stain that we did on these displays that we made. And you'll see sometimes in uh, storage, they'll get kind of scratched up. And so we can just come through, oops, and really smush that in there because I mean if it got really bad we could take it and like take it home and sand it and like get that all taken care of now the only thing is is this stuff kind of stinks so you'll want to be careful with it and you'll want some tissue to ooh, doing this one-handed because I did not think ahead oh well that's fine well, that's on the ground now. Okay. You'll want some tissue that you can buff it in. Because you'll certainly, you don't want like weird little 
stain line. So I probably waited a little longer than I should have. But yeah, you can just buff that in. Didn't really take much material off. And um, I think that can make a big difference too. And just being able to spot things up, make it look kind of nice and tight and tidy. Um, but yeah, so there's that bar light. But what we started running into, you can see down here, we've got one, two, three, four. Oh, I lost count. <laughs> okay. One, two. Because I also, when I originally was budgeting for these in our booth setup, I thought I'd be able to fit one per square. But you can kind of see it takes like one and a bit. And that little bit each time offsets it. So it didn't work out as I as perfectly as I thought it would. Now I it the each one did come with that connector. Like each pack had enough connectors or cable options. So we could have just done a cable in between each and like velcroed it up to the underside of the grid. Um but we really like this option because if we end up not using the runner on the second story uh, it looks a lot tidier than having a bunch of white cords um, that are very obvious against the grids. <clears throat> but you'll notice what we run into is down here, that light and that light are supposed to be the same. And let's see if it's obvious whenever you back up. Yeah, that one's much brighter than that one and so it's really I would go one two three four five or six lights on a cord before introducing another extension cord and restarting like a second or even third line for how long our booth is now um I love 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 these lights though and even when like some of the other LED lights I've gotten in the past, whenever like the coffee pot is on, they'll flicker. Or if the heater comes on, like if there's a power, we've got, our house was built like in the early 1900s, so our electricity is pretty jank. Um, but these lights have been pretty constant. They aren't like glaring and terrible, whereas here you can see over here on these strips, even though we have it Velcroed, it's like they just by their own weight, they are flimsy. And so they kind of hang and that's very, like they are piercing uh, in their brightness, which is good, but also bad. So, <clears throat> and so you can just like face it a bit, but if you're a short person or in a wheelchair or anything like that, that's going to be directly in your eyeballs. Whereas I feel like that is a lot less intrusive and like painful. Um, but yeah, so that's just a continuous strip. And this has a very cold light to it, which really makes your blues and your greens and your purples pop. But your reds, even on this one, it's almost like having like a filter on, like it's very, very intense. But most convention centers have very harsh fluorescent lighting. So I went with the day white, not the warm white, which is an even more yellow. It's like a little too yellow. Uh, for my taste but I really personally liked this one but it's it's your discretion it's your booth it's your setup it's your tone that you want to set so do that that's I cannot emphasize enough the right way to do this is your way also uh, whenever we don't have power in our booth we use these power banks to charge our phones um, because that's how we take our card transactions is with the square swiper on our phone and we use one of these. Oftentimes, we'll just use a cord coming off of this into the phone and carry both of them in the aprons that we wear in our booth because it took one convention of getting our phones stolen during setup when there weren't any attendee attendees in the building. There was somebody going through who knew exactly what they were doing, and uh, we got our phone stolen. And that was back whenever Randy and I only had one phone between the two of us. Fortunately, we had a helper there and they were able to download the Square app on their phone and we were still able to take cards that weekend, but it sucked. We never set our phones down. We never set anything down whenever we're at a convention, um, you know, other than our booth, but it's it just goes right into the apron pocket. Like that's where we keep our money, that's where we keep our card swipers and each person in our booth, usually it's just me and Randy, but if we have a helper, they've got an apron too. And the rule is it goes right into your apron. 
uh, in that way, especially with such a long booth, um, you're not having, leaving something at one end of the booth and having to run back and forth and getting in other people's ways. Like the way that we have this set up is this section between these two taller points is Randy's section. And usually uh, right here will be, we will be butted up against another booth because we've got two 10 by 10s in line. And then down here is my section. Uh, because I do the custom fitting for people with the ear cuffs and the finger rings. And I have smaller hands, so it's easier for me to uh, do the earring displays. But I take care of this end, and our entrance is usually... We have about a two-foot-wide entrance that, like, just pretend that there's, like, either a wall or another booth right there. But that's where I come in and out, and that way I can come around and help people. So it's very important um, for Randy that he's able to reach everything from his side of the table. Otherwise, he has to either uh, get me to stop what I'm doing so I can come around and help, which I don't mind a bit. But sometimes, if we're lucky, it's very busy. And... Um, so just being able to access everything from the back side. So these bracelet bars, we are able to reach around from the back and lift it, pull it back, take the bracelets off of there. The uh, pendant flats, actually, let me show you on this one. And we do have a video for how to make these, but it has a little latch to where you can just lay this down and reach in through the back. It's got this latch right here that just clips onto a safety pin and a key ring. Um, let me uh, I, let me get the camera down and I'll show you. Okay. So let's come down. There you can see that's the safety pin and that's the key ring. And then we just bring this up to Sometimes it gets a little caught, but, and that's how that goes. And that way we're able to reach everything from the back side of the table. So before we used grid squares, we used, this is a over the sink counter organizer and we just never like glued it together, but we would take these two boards and Kind of just put them, there we go, line them up, and we smush them together, and we had made short pegs, and the reason, it's kind of jank, but, uh, like, it's sketchy for sure, um, we would use these cut bits of zip ties to make it tight enough, because otherwise it would be too loose on some of them, some of the pegs. Um, and so to keep some of them from wiggling, we would like cram a little bit of zip tie in there. But this gave us an option that could be short. Or we could, we have a second board somewhere um, that we would put the tall pet legs into. And that would give us kind of our different levels, our tiered levels of display before we started doing this with the grid squares and stuff. Um, we do get a lot of questions from folks about how we keep thievery down. And a lot of it is to just be very vigilant. Um, we, and so we try to avoid having blind spots. We try to make it to where it's not easy for people to just lift and take off. Like this, all of our... <laughs> Super terrible! <laughs> So all of our necklaces, we actually have magnets holding. That's why I like the enameled iron so much, is it just latches right onto the button. And it keeps, it's really great for keeping the necklace centered on the display. Let's check on that one that I chunked onto the ground. Um, and I'll show you how we avoid that as well. Normally I don't have to worry about it on the lower down pieces. But we made these displays just with pieces of, we found um, these at uh, like the dollar store and we just got the little hinge set and hinged the piece on 
and used push tacks and some ribbon to make it so it's an easel back. <clears throat> there we go. And I like anything that can kind of close down pretty easy. But yeah, so there's the magnets. We just fish the magnets out. It makes everything seem a lot more tangled. Oh, there went that again. It makes everything seem a lot more tangled than what it was. Or what it actually is, rather. <clears throat> Sometimes I don't mind doing two um, necklaces on a display. But I do think it's a really good idea to make sure that your jewelry has space to be noticed. You know, each display is putting your jewelry or whatever your product is on display. Like, you want it to be showcased. So, like, these bracelet bars, for example, we could technically cram almost twice as much stock, like, twice as many bracelets on each bar. But it would look so crowded and jumbled. Like, it's really nice to have a little bit of space in between. I don't even know what's eluding me like black paint on me but oh well anyways um <laughs> it's really nice to have a little bit of space in between so that customers who are coming through because all of this might seem very like humdrum and normal and you know not that exciting to randy and i because we made all of it and we've... i'm just gonna see how much stuff i can throw on the ground <laughs> but to customers they're already probably pretty overstimulated just by being at a convention or vending event because they're designed it's like being at a carnival like you could be there all day and still find new stuff that's you know popping up that you didn't notice the first time um so we try to make it pretty clear pretty you know well displayed like um this pendant flat for example this one i feel is a, a very good example of giving each piece enough space um it's very <sighs> just tidy and orderly whereas this display over here I feel like is a little overcrowded there's not quite enough space for all of these pendants to be you know really showcased so if we were to go through now whenever I made the display this was the first one that I had done and then I was like oh yeah we need to not have that many but just you know it's something to to keep in mind and it is what it is it's not the end of the world uh we're actually going to keep a close eye and see because just because we prefer the other displays doesn't mean that this one might not have our best sales off of it so this might also be a really good spot to do small like very small pendants like this size or smaller uh just you know because you can fit more of them but it's some for some of these bigger ones i think they'd be much better off being on like that display over yonder that has a whole bunch of space same thing with I don't mind doing two but also to use down here as an example um, and we will be going and looking at the rest of the booth as well this necklace right here the one with the dagger beads hanging off of it is a little less than ideally displayed be just because it's behind these two other displays so I don't mind putting jewelry there but I put it there not with a big expectation for it to move just because it's not as noticeable. That doesn't mean it's never going to sell. It's just a good spot to have jewelry that whenever something sells, we can move one of those other pieces up. But really, if you come right over here with me, this is something we get asked a lot about as well. And that is how do we keep our back stock? Because um, whenever we prepare for a vending event, we want to have um, like kind of three times as much jewelry as what it takes to fill our display. Currently, most of everything we have out is all we have, but we did have some extras with the necklaces here, and I'm just gonna scooch these displays out of the way so that you can see. And whenever we make jewelry, oftentimes we'll be like, okay, this one design, I'm gonna do it, and we're gonna do it in a bunch of different uh, stone colors or gemstone types or crystal colors, just whatever it is, or we might do three of the same type uh, three or four just to have multiples that way whenever one sells off of the display we can put another one out or maybe somebody likes that one but they're like you know I love it but I really wish you had it in like warmer colors in which case we could be like cool we have it in vintage bronze and antique copper and it's just by having this hung and I'm going to take the camera down and show you we just hang these on little hooks that we found 
we made <laughs> like we like took other things apart they're just hooks that hang and we just hang our extra necklaces on them now our extra pendants we keep in a tackle box tray like this one here which that's what we carry all of our inventory in. we actually carry it in these three tackle boxes um, and I really like that these tackle boxes have big tops because that gives us places to put the organza bags um, just business cards any other like big clunky stuff that is very very essential for our vending operation but that we so we don't want to forget it but it's too small to we don't want to just lose it in a tote so these are Plano tackle boxes brand doesn't matter it's just I like that it's enclosed the handles are really sturdy which is very very important and uh, those tackle box trays fit a whole bunch of stuff y'all like bunches but yeah so just little details like making sure that the bracelets aren't twisted that they're faced forward so that the most of the pattern is displayed towards the front um i really like using the magnets because if we have a necklace that's a heavier necklace we can put more magnets on the back side of it uh, to counterweight it or we can use binder clips to just you know add some counterweight but um I really like using them for just catching up the back of a necklace and then because I like the necklaces again this is just me all I can speak of is my own experience you guys so if I say something and you're like well that's ridiculous then you do you <laughs> like it's your booth it's your thing do that but I just wanted to try to be helpful to y'all um, we also use binder clips on the backs of our necklace displays on that easel back to clip through and I'm gonna move the camera again so I can show you what I just did so here you can see I have that binder clip clipped not just onto the display but around one of the wires of the grid also so now that's not gonna fall over but yeah, we actually found this is one of the original it was like a trophy display placard that we found at like Goodwill when we still lived in Tennessee and we liked the shape of it so much that we traced it onto just pieces of pine um, and cut it out with a jigsaw and then sanded it down and stained it and made that easel back and we made it in a couple of different sizes so we have this very tall one over there in the corner like very tall we have the the very the shorties <laughs> uh the medium ones the small medium um I, I really like them the wood is heavy but boy it's durable because we used to use a whole bunch of leatherette and velveteen and if it was humid or if they got smushed in packing they were just they would they were falling apart now granted it had been like 10 years since we'd purchased them but still <laughs> you know you don't want your stuff falling apart so this is an example of that so here you can see this is it's all bruised down the middle from where something got smushed up against it so all the padding is like compressed it's dented it's dirty looking um the humidity would make these start peeling i had to epoxy the hinge back on the ribbon held up pretty well that's good um, but I loved the concept of these displays and I especially really liked the, um, the Velcro. But again, this is that Velcro that gets real dirty, um, pretty easily, but we always just leave it on there. But it was a good way of having a lot of just necklaces or circlets or bracelets even like you can, you can put all sorts of stuff on a display like this. So we made our own, but leaf shaped because something that I really prefer the look of, um jewelry displayed on a little bit of a curve so we actually sell a template for making your own cone displays whether it's a cone or a leaf and it's like a dollar but if you join our happy crafter club at the five dollar level or higher um all of our leather templates and different things like that are uh, available to you in our digital download content but i mean a flat display isn't bad i just really like the curve of a round of, a, of like a curved display I don't know like <laughs> I like it um it's very just graceful and nice it pleases me uh, <laughs> so um yeah I, to go back to the 
trying to stave off thievery by using the magnets to make things heavy and cumbersome in the back. Um, you know, by having our jewelry on hooks that they can't just take it off the table and walk away, like just kind of grab and walk. You, unless you understand what's going on here, some folks have a lot, really hard time with the uh, the hooks, which is okay, but we don't have a whole lot of trouble with, like we can tell when people are touching things. It's if they walk by and they're just trying to grab and walk. Um, and so with the bracelet bars, again, it can be a little bit cumbersome if somebody wants the bracelet right in the middle, but I would rather have to go through the hassle of taking all of the bracelets off to get to that one stretchy bracelet in the middle because we don't have that problem with our um, non-stretchy bracelets that just have a clasp. We would just come in and unclasp it. Well, I use two hands, I guess. We'll just unclasp it and we're good to go. Um, but it's just really for the stretchy bracelets, which is okay, which is also, uh, but the biggest thing with, with preventing thievery, I'm sorry, is I keep forgetting, I keep getting sidetracked rather, um, is to put your weaknesses, the things that would be easily taken, like finger rings, like ear cuffs, like the bracelets that just sit on these displays and can just be lifted as easy as that, put those most in front of you, like the stuff that's very, very like thief proof, not, I mean, nothing is, but the things that are most likely to be difficult to steal. Um, I don't have those in my immediate line of vision, though it's not a blind spot either. Try to avoid blind spots and put the stuff that's easiest to take right in front of your face. Um, and then it's just, I mean, it, hmm, how to put this? Sometimes it might be more worth your time to pay somebody for the weekend to help you in the booth just to keep that much or more of merchandise from walking away from your booth in the pockets and hands of thieves. So that might just be something <laughs> to, uh, you know, have a trusted friend that you're paying because, you know, that's nice. Um, or it volunteer or somebody who's willing to work for jewelry, but it's really, if anybody has the good graces in their heart to help me, I'm going to pay them if I can, because I know we've all got bills. But that being said, having more people in your booth watching out for your booth is the best defense. You know, that and just being diligent is all we can do, you know. So, um, let's see what's next. Right. Um, now we don't have any out currently, but we like to put, there are options for where to put your business cards. One of my inclinations would have normally been to have put a thing of business cards just right here, but uh, if I'm tired, somebody reaching and grabbing a business card could look an awful lot like somebody reaching and grabbing um, a piece of inventory. So oftentimes now we will put our business cards up high like right here, not only is it a little bit more eye level or we can point and it's like boop right there. Um, but if somebody's reaching up, it's a very different movement to reach up. And we've got these little business card holders that were actually given to us by a woodworker in St. Louis because we had, he had come over and asked if we had anything that could be used to like clamp something to his table. And we helped him get it rigged up. Like, I don't know if we had some bungees or what, but he was so like, he was like, thank you guys. Here you go. And gave us some business card holders. And I was like, well, holy crap. Thank you. <laughs> so we have some really nice business card holders. And that's going to be my number one. If I had to pick a number one rule for vending, be a good neighbor. Because we are all in the same sinking ship. If you're at a show and it's a crappy show, it's very likely that no other vendor in that room is happy to be there either. Take that as an opportunity to network, to make friends, to just, you know, uh, you, you have a chance to make a memory here. Are you going to remember the show as the crappiest show you've done forever and it's got like, you know, it was a horrible loss? Or maybe it's the show where you made really good friends with that company that sells the t-shirts or, you know... Like you, you don't know, like it's, you have an opportunity to make it something amazing, even if it's a really crappy financial, you know, loss. Um, so yeah, be, be a good neighbor. And it really sets a model too, that if somebody else is brand new to vending and they see you being an absolute asshat, they'll think that that's just how to be. 
And so we get to set the tone and set the standard of behavior for how to treat each other and how to look out for each other, you know, as opposed to seeing how much we can screw the neighbor over, you know, by expanding our booth into their spot or stealing their chairs or their tables or their money box. <laughs> like I've seen people be pretty crappy to each other, but I've seen more people be amazing to each other. So that's just something that if, if you can, if you're getting into this, just know that vendors are some of the most resilient and hardy and reliable people on the face of this earth. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really proud um, to be associated with our vendor friends because I'm proud of them, you know, with their character and their integrity and stuff. So just say, getting that out of the way, thank you to the dude. I don't even know, uh, like I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know that I exist, but I'm really happy that he gave us those. It's a really nice memory. Um, but yeah, so we put our business cards up high. That way when somebody takes a business card, it's not super sus. Cause you know, if somebody, if the business cards are like right here on the table and somebody's just reaching and grabbing a business card, they could have just as easily been, I don't know. I'm not a very good thief. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So as we work our way down the booth, I wanted to talk to you guys about if you have anything velvet or velveteen or you're going to want to bring some sort of lint removing device. And if you're crunched on space like I am, don't bother with a lint roller. Just bring masking tape because you're going to need it for uh, taping down extension cords, um, just taping stuff together and a little bit of masking tape. can fold like this and do well I should have done a bit more because you can do like multiple fingers in it I'm so bad at this well just pretend with me for a minute let's make it tighter there we go you can just do like that and I'm gonna move the camera in so this is our believe it or not brand new velvet display and just collecting dust out of the house and out of, it's like they're statically charged. And so you can come through and just roll. I mean, normally I do this without the jewelry in it, but you can just spot check and spot clean and really start to tidy up the difference between that and that. And putting in those little points of effort are gonna make a big difference in your booth. And I'm just gonna say, it's a lot harder to tape down extension cords with a lint roller than it is with a roll of masking tape. So I bring the masking tape. Um, now also, I wanted to show you guys right here the difference between tilting up the back of your displays. So it's entirely, I'm not gonna tell you which one's better or which one you, know, you should do, but I like this one <laughs> just cause it helps bring up, whoop, the back of your display makes it a little bit more visible and uh right after i attach these little feet i'm going to show you how i made them through the magic of editing so i just i like for them to come off that way everything can stack nice and easily in teardown like whenever we're packing it all into totes but yeah just having it nice and elevated it's driving me absolutely bonkers that they're not at the same angle but that is because there's a table height difference here by about a quarter of an inch and that tracks <laughs> so it drives me a little crazy but i don't know if anybody else will notice it i could always put them a little farther apart um so that's a thing we do have a video for how we do how we made these pendant flats um I don't know if I'd mentioned that already. We talked a little bit about how we made our easel displays out of wood. Um, the cone displays really are just <clears throat> like a semicircle or a half circle with some snaps or you can do magnets or Velcro spots. And it just makes it into a really nice little cone. And then there's the magnet gathering up the whole chain. But I really, really love using the magnets because again, without the magnet gathering all the chain up, the, this necklace is way too big for this display. 
Whereas if we just gather all the chain up with said magnet, pop it on there, then we can just keep, there we go. Nice and centered on the display. Now here in the back, you can see we have these little ears <clears throat> that these are actually, and they are linked down below, they're silicone ears, so their dust will just stick to them. I think they're the best way. We, we move so many more ear cuffs whenever we have them displayed on ears than if they're just in a tray like this. <clears throat> and I like having them for displaying sets. And we actually left the paper on the acrylic uh, just for now. Um, I, I liked it a little bit better than a disembodied ear floating in clear acrylic. Um, but we'll kind of play that by ear <laughs> as it goes. <laughs> oh gosh. We found out after doing our initial setup that we need some elevation, like to prop some of our displays up just a little bit. So we're putting together these little feet that we'll have. I tried this craft glue um, and it's the, the Velcro has too much tooth. Like it won't actually, the glue, like it's going to take so much glue and I don't know how well, the, well it's going to hold. So I'm starting by just piecing. These are little scrap pieces of wood from our uh, laser cutting operation that we've got going on. We are just going to line these different things up. And then I used up all my little clamps, so I'm just going to use some binder clips to hold those together while they dry. And I'm propping up, you'll see a little later in the video, um, or earlier, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to edit this. Um, you'll you'll have seen the ring displays and the ear cuff displays that we're trying to get a little bit more of like bringing the back edge of the display up uh, a little just a hair higher than the front so you could use whatever in the past we've actually for similar uh, like similar needs we would just fold up like a handkerchief and kind of put that below the back side of the display to prop it up, but I'd really like something that's a little more consistent and like intentional. And considering it was using scrap anyways, I had considered making them out of like magnets or uh, epoxy sculpt and really these were just at such a perfect little angle that I think it will be just what we need. So now I'm going to come through and use hot glue to apply. I'm going to have the pokey side be applied to the bottom of the display, so I need the soft side up on these ones. So with that in mind, I'm going to do a line of, this is high temperature hot glue, and then, so I'm going to try to not burn myself, and then we're just going to take that and then I'm going to unclamp it because it's been long enough probably and use this ceramic tile to press to get a good hold. And if any pokes out the sides, we can scrape it off with either a fingernail or wait till it cools completely and carve it off with a craft knife. Or you can just leave it overhanging. This is truly a part of the display that nobody should be seeing. Um, I think I am going to go ahead before I proceed any further and I'm just going to paint them black. Um, just so that they match our covers and everything like that. So um, I just wanted to show you the concept though, and let's go ahead and test it. Yep, it's Velcro, it still works. So <laughs> that is how we're making each of these little displays. And I think it actually gives us an option that we can put it on this way, or we can put it on this way, which might give us a highest ang higher angle. Um, of elevation, but we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Alrighty, guys. So this is one of our trays that we put an insert in, and this is what we'll be displaying our ear cuffs in. But I just wanted to show you same basic concept as to how we're going to be applying the Velcro to these pieces. And we're just using the hot glue and I'd like to kind of, I'm just going to set the Velcro off to the side and I'm coming in right here, not completely to the edge just because I don't feel like I need it right there. And I'm using an old craft stick 
to apply even pressure because I don't want this to be lumpy from my fingers. So there's one. And I need pokey side up because the, the feet all have the smooth side. So again, I'm just using the piece off to the side, like the Velcro, as kind of a rough... Where'd that stick go? There it is. As a rough guide for how long to apply the glue, or what distance to apply the glue, and then I'm smushing that down. And the hot glue, this high temperature hot glue, even though it is quite hot, sets real quick. And I really like these Velcro pieces. Um, everything that I'm using, all of the displays, everything like that will be linked down in the video description to be helpful to y'all. So here you can see we can just apply the Velcro. And these aren't load bearing. They aren't, you know, anything more than just elevating the feet up. And so I would like to have them more or less in line with each other. And hopefully this will look a little bit more... Ooh, looks good. And you can't really tell the angle that it's perched at. But it gives a nice little foot and we can always... Turn it. And I don't know if that's actually going to get us... I mean it wobbles now, so I guess it does bring it up just a little higher. If you are good at geometry, um, you can experiment and make these be whatever shape that you want. I personally think it's just fine like this, and we could even shift it back a little further. Just if we need to change the positioning, that long strip of Velcro gives us options. And that's the nicest thing I think to have, is to just have some different options whenever you are setting your boot up, booth up if you need something a little bit different just having that luxury of well maybe let's try it this way this time so yeah I really like that now my table's warped so it's not laying flat but let's get all of these done and then we will go over and check out how they look on the display with our earrings there are so many different ways to display earrings. I personally really like these ones because they have the flat bottom that we needed. Any of the earring displays that have like the three or four or even five tripod legs like kind of poking out just aren't as very stable on the grids like this. We could have put a board down, but I we got these two of our three earring displays uh, in 2007. Um, so we kind of made that decision based off of, I just thought they were cute and then stuck with it. Now this one here in the middle, I, is our most recent one. I, it was the last one they had for sale on Fire Mountain Gems and we were able to get it. So you can see that's brand new and that's a bit older. Well, by a lot, um, well, a, bit, a lot more use rather. And they hold up wonderfully. Very first thing to go are these really cute little leaves. Uh, those get broken off instantly. <laughs> um, and the way that we pack down our earrings is we actually just take them off. We break the stand down. We wrap this in a bit of bubble wrap and just put it back into the original box that the displays came in. The original box for the older ones uh, are mostly packaging tape at this point, just holding the cardboard together, but it works. Um, and this one I actually put a little bit of foam onto the inside that I kind of need to like tape or something to get it to actually be a cylinder. But just to experiment with how we think it looks having something that stops the eye in a nice solid background as opposed to just nice and open. I mean we've been doing good, good earring sales since 2008. Um, but... You never know, you know, I'm always pushing and trying something new. You never know till you try. And sometimes you have to try something five or six times in slightly different ways before you find what really, really works. So um, they do have the kind of squared off earring displays that are very good for putting earring cards on. That's a really great way of going about it. Um, now, the way that we pack our earrings down um, into their boxes, we often run into problems like this right here, where we'll have 
just a little bit of tangling so we do have to go through and front our earrings um yeah like this guy here we need to tighten up the ear hook on that and coming around just to see like sometimes just to for us an example um sometimes they'll be like that and we'll just need to go through and tighten them up um it's a really great way of uh, quality control testing on our jewelry because if our pieces can't hold up to being um, abused then maybe we didn't need to be selling it because we, if it's gonna break we want it to break on us not on the customer so here is how we have our finger rings now for years we have displayed our finger rings in flats like this where if you pretend with me for a moment that oh, it's all laid out perfect and we have it by size or by price or whatever. And then the first customer comes through and face rolls through the entire thing. And we can't tell if something's missing. We can't, like, it was pointless to try to put the tags, you know, because I, I don't, I, I love our tags that we use. They're these shark skin tags. It's actually, they're linked down below. But they're just these little guys. And... I write on them with a micron pen that's the size nib that I use and I think it gets a pretty decent let's just say it gets a very nice clear line that doesn't smudge when you get it wet um, which is great for if you get rained on sideways at an outdoor show you don't want to have to replace all of your tags and like this one here let's zoom in so you can see on some of these pendants, you'll notice this one has like a little tag up at the top that's just where it attached, but on most of them, we have the tag hidden on the back. And we have found if you can get potential customers touching your jewelry, if you can get them to try it on, if you can get them to hold it up and see how it looks in the mirror, they are so much more likely to get a nice close look at it, feel connected with it, and ho hopefully take it home <laughs> so pay for it and take it home um so and also i think it just looks so much sleeker like i don't want people to be just seeing the tags i want them to see the pieces so um and that being said that's over here like on this display same thing goes for with our bracelets it's yeah i mean they can see the tags when they're like this but i think it looks so much like more presentable again just for my own standard and my standards are my own yours may be different and they're just as valid but have your booth so that you are proud of it that you like how it looks because that's what's going to give you the confidence to stand in the face of some like snooty eight-year-old walking through your booth saying well you do the best with what you've got randy had to stop me from tackling a child <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it gives you, it's armor against people who are being rude to just be confident in your own work, not because of external validation, but from knowing that you did your best. And quite frankly, if that's not good enough for somebody else, that's a them problem. So you, if you're doing your best, you keep doing that. Okay, so that leads me into, this is now whoop, one of the ways that we store our back stock. That way if somebody sees this and they're like, oh, I really like that ring, but do you have it in a different color? We can be like, we have these. <laughs> because we also just store, this is how the inventory looks when it's in our trays, is like these rose rings. We'll go through and we'll make them in a bunch of different sizes, even though we do um, resizing in our booth as well. It's still nice to just, maybe we have it already in that size so we'll put rings of similar types in different sections um but instead of rummaging through an inventory tray i personally really like just having one of these behind the table of duplicate jewelry um and also that way if we sell something i can just pluck one off of here and put it on the empty spot so that is my hope with these new ring displays that we did get on Amazon. They are linked down in the video description. Um, we've never sold these before, so I'm trying them out. I personally absolutely love them, I think. But it took some working with. Because if you can see, when it come down to a little bit lower than eye level, 
and I'm going to come to the other side because one of the problems that I had with them just as they were out of the box is I can't really see if the ring is large um I can't see it behind the ring in front of it uh nearly as so well like this one right here is a good example and if they're over a size 7 they just slide right down all the way to the bottom almost whereas I feel like once we once we added some of the little feet that we had made to the bottoms of them and elevated them on additional display flats that I'll show you here in a sec. So again, we just bring this around, smush that up on there. It's more of that Velcro. Let me get it to the, I'm gonna boop so that maybe, maybe y'all can see a little better. And that Velcro, it's, I mean, you're, it's not moving a whole lot. You just need it to hold. So there's that one. And then, and again, we take, we have these little feet be removable. That way, um, whenever we break down, it's just a little easier to pack something flat bottomed away. So there's that. And now we have, these are just some little trays, very similar to what we have over here these are the 7 by 13 or 7 by 14 I think and these are 7 by I don't know they're they're half trays so hopefully that conveys about the size but I really like that they have these plastic feet that way we can stack them and they don't slide off of each other and this gives us a really great razor or riser to pull to bring those up and then we set this right there perfect width I don't know how that happened but perfect <laughs> I'll take it and then setting that in the front and I feel like this might be a lot we're gonna play it by ear and see but none of the changes or modifications that we've made to this are permanent I like to keep setup elements of our booth as modular as possible so that there is tons of room for us to grow and evolve and develop and try new things until we find we like find what's really streamlined what's really just most efficient most effective most joyful because it's not just about we are not some corporation here fleecing clients for money like i love making jewelry and i've said it before and i'll say it until i'm blue in the face if i won the lottery and never had to worry about paying my bills or money or anything like that for the rest of my life like if I were financially free I would still do this because I love it and I love people wearing my jewelry like I love like them seeing it and be like ah oh, this is perfect so and so is gonna love this or you know just getting to make art and other people loving it and wearing it and sharing it and it's like it's so nice to share something that I find joy in with other people and I've had some of the best conversations with other crafters and other creative folk and just meeting people like I'm kind of so kind of really socially awkward um but if I've got a booth between me and other people I'm a social butterfly like I can just chit chat all day long and I, I find the same thing about myself with my YouTube channel like if I can share something that I'm passionate about it helps me to connect with other human beings which I desperately crave to connect with other crafters of you know with, with y'all and this gave me a way to do that and shiny jewelry <laughs> so I'm gonna keep always 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 pushing that um trying to make it the best it can be and it's it's very important especially if you're very new to vending you're you're only competing against yourself uh this is not a race <laughs> uh and it's you you know only compare yourself to where you are and where you're at and where you hope to go because anything else is just stealing joy like don't come if you if you're next to a booth um, and who's selling something very similar to you and it seems like they're doing great and it feels like you're doing terrible like you don't know like you don't know their situation you don't know you know how bad they might desperately have needed a really good show um, 
you know, so don't don't measure measure your apples against their oranges just because you don't know the whole situation and don't make assumptions and certainly don't be like, man, I wish I I wish I were, you know, like or be like, well, mine sucks. Like, it doesn't look like that. It's like yours doesn't need to look like theirs. Yours needs to be the best yours because like <laughs> no one in this world, you guys, can be a better you than you. Nobody can offer this world what you have to offer your unique experience and vision and you know history and future you know it's you know don't undervalue that and you know you might be just in the very first steps of your journey comparing yourself to somebody I know our very first convention was Chattacon Yes, Chattacon in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and it's a fantastic, well, I mean, it, it's been years since we've gone, but whenever we went, we had so, so much fun, and there's some amazing people there, and we were looking at these vendors over in the corner who had, like, this amazing setup, Eridani Studios. It's a family of very talented artists and artisans, and they're, you know, uh, very shrewd business people, so they had a really good looking setup, and I was like, dang they're doing awesome I want to be like that and so we like really applied ourselves to try to kind of catch up with them and we didn't know that they had been doing this for 15 years already it like it was not their first rodeo like they have been here and done it um and so it was while well, I was inspired by them I did not at all let their expertise defeat me like that's because we're not we're not in competition now granted you know they did have some jewelry and stuff as well but I never feel like even when we're right next to another jewelry person we are not in competition with each other we have way more in common than we do in conflict clearly we both like making jewelry <laughs> and if you don't like making jewelry why are you making and selling jewelry <laughs> like you could make and sell anything <laughs> um so it's, uh, you know, use it as an opportunity to inspire each other instead of trying to stand on each other, I guess is what I'm getting at. So that is that display. Ooh, other little things to keep in mind. Some pieces of jewelry are better displayed on something that's going to contrast with them. So we don't have, you know, a whole bunch of different colors of displays, but I do think um like very 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 dark like black or brown or very dark tones whatever you go with or very very light tones can add a really nice contrast because this is the same tone of copper wire and I feel like the copper wire really pops on this display it could be that it's on the you know silver moon as well as opposed to on this one, it kind of blends in a little bit. So that's just something to keep in mind. Also, whenever you're displaying jewelry, this one up here, the necklace there on the bottom, could really do to be pulled up. So all of them on this display actually could do to be fiddled with. I was working on this before... Um, I did anything with the magnets but if your if your necklace has a teardrop make sure that it's displayed on something like this one would actually be very much better displayed down here like I could trade those two necklaces that way um, this one could be more better like better displayed I don't know I'm not good at English it's the only language I speak I'm just not very good at it um, but yeah, so I think, you guys, I think this is our booth set up. Ooh, we did use some, oops, kicked the tripod. We did use some uh, picture frames with the batting and some velvet. You could use whatever material um, that you like. Like if you don't like velvet or you don't want to have to clean velvet, you could use, you know, leatherette or silk or satin or, you know, lace would look really cool. Um... I personally am a fan of flatter textures because I have very textured jewelry, especially with chainmail. There's a lot of texture going on there. So I, I prefer something that's not clashing with that. But lace looks really, really good behind metalsmithed pieces. This is purely my own opinion. Polymer clay, like anything that's very bold and um, like solid. Uh, like this piece here, this polymer clay piece, I think would look really good displayed on top of like a uh hmm, what's it lacy like a display 
that has a very lacy background because there's not a whole lot of texture on it but uh that's just me though you guys so that was another picture frame down there I think that we actually did a short on so let me know like I tried to be all encompassing but there's no way to do that um oh yeah also you can see we've got that display down there we do have enough space here on the table that if we decide to make a whole lot more of literally anything we could use display flats like that one that have like a clear cover on them or some little hooks or something to keep things from walking away from the booth but we could fill up the whole front edge of the booth but I thought I thought starting with just filling this up first would be a really good idea if you have any questions comments or ideas please leave them down in the comment area if you weren't here during the premiere um i was trying to answer everybody's questions i'm sure hey everybody in the premiere uh if you had any questions you could have asked live in the premiere or you can ask in the comments or even send us an email to back to earth creations at yahoo.com um there's there's so much that goes into this that it can seem very overwhelming, but I just wanted to give you as much information as I could about how we do it so that you can cherry pick from that and be like, well, this seems like a good idea, but I think I need to change it like this to make it work for me. And that's perfect. That's, that's exactly what we're hoping for. Um, so I, I do hope that this was helpful to you. Um, again, links to everything are down in the video description below. And if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please consider joining our Happy Crafter Club either over on our website, backtoearthcreations.com, or over on Patreon. Um, and again, more information about that is down in the video description below, or you can always send us an email to ask. We do shop updates every Monday, new tutorials every Thursday and Sunday, premiering at noon Central Standard Time, and live streams that are, <laughs> not gonna lie, fun but very grainy and the streams have been dropping a lot lately at the time of recording in uh spring of 2022 so they are a lot of fun but not exactly the best quality in the world um and that's okay we're working on it but uh yeah so you can check out the calendar on our website back to earthcreations.com for our up-to-date streaming schedule as well just in case you're watching this a few years hence hello future people <laughs> and Having said that, thank you guys so much again for being here and for being you, and I will see y'all next time. So until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>